Hello, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Tom Armitage, and I'm a marketing executive for the University of Liverpool online programmes. Uh, today, I'm joined by Ida Kemp, De Deputy Academic Director, uh, Stephen Livesey, our Director of Learning Technology, uh, and Alexandra Lockwood, who is from our admissions team. In this session, I will give you an introduction to the University of Liverpool and Ida will then talk about the online master's programmes that are available to study on a full, fully online and part-time basis. Stephen will give a short demonstration of the virtual learning env environment to give you an idea of how an online student accesses their learning materials and what a week of study might look like. Alexandra will then explain the admissions and enrolment process uh, if you are interested in finding out more about our programmes and wish to make an application in the future. We will also have a short time at the end for questions, uh, but do feel free to drop them into the chat or Q&A section as we go and we will review and pick these up at the end. So just a bit about the university. The University of Liverpool is a well-respected UK university. It's a founding member of the Russell Group, which is a group representing the top 24 universities in the UK and has strengths in many areas, including health, computer science and management. The university has a significant number of international students, many online students, and is associated with nine Nobel laureates and is ranked in the top 200 universities worldwide. The university has been delivering online programmes since the year 2000 and is one of the peers in online higher education. The online master's, pro master's programmes offered by the university are designed to work around you as a part-time postgraduate student and likely an international student, but we do have many UK-based student, UK students taking our courses too. You will have the opportunity to engage with materials in your own time through the virtual learning environment. There are some live sessions, but these are usually not compulsory for you, although they are a good opportunity for you to engage with other students in those sessions. We have a strong student community and try to ensure that our online students have a good level of engagement with their fellow students and teaching staff. The course materials developed by staff are designed for the online environment and our programmes are much more than just a reading list. They are interactive, challenging, but they also, there is also a high level of support from academics and our student support team to ensure that students are successful in their studies. Students who successfully complete their studies graduate from the University of Liverpool and are awarded a Liverpool Postgraduate Degree Certificate, just the same as students who take similar programmes on campus. I'm now going to pass over to Ida, who will discuss the uh, the programs that we offer. Over to you, Ida. Thank you very much. Thank you, everyone, for coming today. It's delighted. We're delighted to have you find out more about our programs. So, um, I'm going to talk a bit more about the subjects that we offer uh, through the programs through the online delivery. Uh, we have programs in management, computer science, academic practice, and which is related to education, law. Um, medicine and health sciences uh, for a uh, master's in public health and a psychology program. Could we move to the next slide? So I'm going to start with our management programs. Uh, we have eight programs. Most of them are MSc programs. The only difference is the MBA program. Uh, they all have a very strong practical approach. So you'll be working with colleagues and uh, peer students um, on, on projects during their course, you'll be introduced to theoretical concepts, which will help you in your work. And um, the whole the programs are designed that from day one, you'll be able to use some of the learning materials in your own work environment or to extend your own uh, knowledge in that area. Uh, digital marketing, of course, will concentrate on the marketing that is um, at the cutting edge of digital technologies. Um, our finance and investment management will concentrate on financial skills uh, that you will need within an organization or within your own private uh, practice. Our healthcare leadership is designed for students who are already working in a healthcare environment and are finding themselves in positions of leadership or management and need some skills to, to better develop their uh, areas, their skills in that area. 
International human resource management and management will concentrate on those areas where um, you're already working in an environment where you're going to need to know some management skills to uh, get your promotion or to understand better how organizations work. Um, and project management and sports business and management are much more applied programs for those particular areas. Uh, project management, of course, is a really important topic for a number of areas, and it's a really good idea if you take those elements to get that practical training in taking projects forward. But our most popular is the Mastery in Business Administration, which is um, really popular because it's delivered all online. Um, we have a really strong cohort of students, and there's a real sense that you learn from other students who are already professionals in their fields. So there's a lot of peer learning in that development. Um, next slide, please. Um, for our computer science programs, the entry requirements will change, will be different. Um, for artificial intelligence, cybersecurity, and data science, um, or sorry, information systems management, we're, we expect that you already are working in some of the fields, um, but you need to augment your knowledge. So um, you should have a strong academic degree. Our conversion programs in computer science and data science are designed for students who don't have a computing background at the moment and want to extend their skills in that area. Um, they're all really popular programs and uh, some of the, there's a number of electives and a number of different modules that you can take. So you can actually tailor a lot of these programs to the areas that you're interested in. So it's really um, important that uh, you have skills in this area. And the, as we know, computing itself is the biggest growing area in, um, in the sector at the moment. So even if it's not something that you necessarily want to work in full time, having that knowledge will certainly help within a larger organization. And these are really popular and uh, in, uh, classes that students really, really enjoy. Next slide, please. So under our education banner, we have the academic practice. Um, these programs are aimed at um, individuals who are working in a higher education environment or are want to want to work in a higher education environment in terms of teaching and learning. So it concentrates on the practice of learning and teaching, developing programs, developing modules, um, listening to students, developing teaching materials, um, and uh, is accredited by the uh, higher advanced HE, um, the, it aligns very closely to the uh, UK PSF, which is the professional standards framework for advanced HE. And uh, so that once you, if you take the accredited pathway, you'll automatically gain fellowship for the advanced HE. Um, we have three options, uh, the certificate, which many of our students start on, but then you can proceed to a diploma or a master's if you really enjoy the program. Um, we have, again, there's a lot of uh, peer learning on these programs. Students learn from each other. Students learn from uh, the practice as well as our very experienced lecturers. Next slide, please. Um, and this year we've just launched the International Business Law Program. We had our first cohort start in January. This well-rounded program is designed as a conversion program. So if you don't have a law degree already, uh, you would this would be quite attractive to you. If you do have a law degree, the business aspect of your law experience will actually come into play here too. Um, again, very uh, strong emphasis on peer learning across students. Um, students bringing in their own expertise, their own knowledge, and so that you get a real breadth, not only from the lecturers that we have that are all professionally based, but also from the other students. Next slide, please. Um, under the medicine and health science, you'll see we have two module or programs listed here. The healthcare leadership, um, we've already seen under the management programs, but we also have our master's in public health. The Master's in Public Health is really important if you want to extend your medical knowledge or if you want to get that broader experience within the medical field. Uh, public health is a growing area, particularly in light of the recent events in terms of the pandemic and other wide ranging uh, elements um, um, and longer term illnesses, for example. We have different pathways within the public health. So there are different ways that you can extend your knowledge in different in the ways that you want to. So um, those pathways lead directly to the dissertation element as well. So it's really a nice way to get a 
breadth as well as specific information about the area in public health, which is probably one of the, again, a growing field within the wider uh, employment sector. And finally, we have our psychology programs. So mental health psychology and organizational business psychology are um, more generic programs that um, will give you some really good insight into uh, the areas that they describe. Mental health psychology has a link with um, the other health programs and organizational business psychology. Of course, if you're working within an organization, this might be quite interesting for you. Our psychology conversion program is designed for students who don't have a psychology degree already, but want to, uh, to get that degree and the BPS accreditation. So that's accredited by the uh, BPS, which is the Brit British Psychological Association um, Society and um, gives you, uh, it's really important if you want to work in the psychology field within the UK, but also has resonance across the globe. Um, more generally, all our programs um, do have accreditation at some level. Uh, the management programs have triple accreditation for the ASCSB, the ECIS, and the um, AMBA accreditation. Um, the students uh, get uh, are really well supported by academic staff at the university, as well as our freelance lecturers who call our professionals in their fields. Um, and we we have a really good, strong support student support system. So if you have questions, you, there's a number of levels where you can get support, whether it's personal support through our student support team or academic support through our academic teams or through the lecturers. I don't think I have anything else to say now, and I'm going to pass over to my colleague, Stephen. That's great. Thanks, Ida. Um, could I have permission to share my screen? And I'll, um, I'll go through a tour of the platform. Thanks. Just give me one sec. Great. Okay, so hopefully you can see my um, my platform there. Great, thank you. So th again, thanks for your time this afternoon, and um, thanks for joining us on this uh, webinar. Um, this this part of the presentation is going to look in some detail at the learning platform, and hopefully just give you an idea about what it's like to study one of our online learning programs. So um, everything I go through is from the perspective of a student. It's just the same view that you would get as a student on the platform. I'll talk a little bit about the environment, and I'll go into a module and show an example of some of the um, content that you'd work through as well as part of one of the programs. So first of all, um, there's one central learning platform to access all the resources you need to complete your program. So all your um, uh, assignments, your learning activities, multimedia resources, um, feedback and grade, everything's through one portal. So there's one place to go to get everything you need. Um, we also have a lot of wraparound services and um, materials and I had touched on this a second ago and that is that we have um, a really amazing student services department and they're there to help with things like um, referencing, perhaps developing more um, academic writing skills. So we have a study skills hub, um, we have career support and just general support throughout your program. So if you need advice and guidance over your program there's a whole team there to help you alongside the academic team who are there to help you with the um, academic delivery is also a huge Sort of support um, network available to you as a student. So this is the learning platform uh, homepage and what I'm going to do is I'm going to go into the students dashboard and in the dashboard um, the students can see the modules that they're enrolled on. So for this example I'm going to go into one of our MBA modules um, but really it doesn't really matter which program you're interested in, the same format and the same structure applies across all our programs. So this is just an example from our um, MBA. And we try and make the learning platform um, as, as sort of clean and simple and easy to use as possible. So first of all, it's all responsive. So you can access this um, platform on your mobile phone or your tablet or your, your PC or laptop. Um, and secondly, we, we maintain um, a consistent format of delivery. So for example, the navigation is always over here on the left-hand side. The content is always in the center of the page. There's a um, consistent schedule page. So as you start to study with us, it doesn't take long for you to become quite comfortable using the, um, the learning environment. And also, if there are any pages where you think, I'm not quite sure how to, how to post to a discussion forum or perhaps upload an assignment, we also have our support widget in the bottom corner. So you might have some questions about a discussion forum 
you can search the knowledge base and then on here there'll be an article to help you um, answer um, your query. Of course, if that doesn't answer your question, that's not a problem. You can always contact student support. So again, either through the platform using a live chat, so you can chat to the team straight through the learning platform, or they have a, a contact phone number or obviously an email address as well. So again, support is there to help you um, with the platform as well. But hopefully it's fairly intuitive so you get used to um, the platform quite quickly. On the module homepage, we've got some introductory text. We've got some um, learning outcomes. So um, students should, should be familiar with what they're expected over the uh, duration of the module. But on the left-hand side, you can see the navigation here. And you can see this module is split over six weeks of study. And I'll, I'll jump into a, meet, into a week in just a, just a minute. Well, first, I'll go through some of these key pages at the top. So the first one is the lecturer office. So every module is supported by a lecturer. And the lecturer's role is really to help you with any academic queries you might have um, regarding that particular module. Now, these are subject specialists who will, will um, you know, focus on, for example, this is a HRM module. So they may have um, industry uh, experience in HRM. Um, and academic experience in that, um, in that field. So on the lecture office page, we have some contact details, you know, um, photograph, a bit of a biography and different channels in which you can contact that, um, that lecturer. There's an additional resources page. So really this section is reserved for anything that might wrap around the whole module. So a resource that's not unique to a week of study. So it could be on one of our computer science programs, you need to use a particular piece of software will direct you to that software through the um, additional resources section. Um, so everything is, is only ever you know, a couple of clicks away. Each module has a schedule. This is a really important module when you, when you come into the module for the first time. This will give you an overview of the activities and assignments that are due throughout the module. So for example, in this HRM module, we have um, a range of activities. So first of all, we have some um, collaborative discussion forum activities. We have a live session. So this particular module and the MBA in particular does have a series of live synchronous sessions and we'll post the time um, of those sessions and a link to the, the lecturer's meeting room in the schedule page. Not all modules have live sessions. Um, the MBA does, it's a requirement of, of one of our accreditations. The AMBER accreditation requires a certain amount of um, synchronous sessions. So there is a requirement to attend these sessions on the MBA. On other programs, it's not a requirement to attend, but we do recommend if, if you are able to get to a live session, they're really valuable sessions, good opportunity to meet the lecturer and also your um, fellow students. If you can't attend, they're obviously also recorded. So you can always catch, catch up on the recording after the event if you couldn't attend. Um, but the module schedule page here just gives me a, a high level overview of the type of assessment that I'm um, expected to complete in this module. So we can see there's a just there's Two discussion forums, and each of those contribute 15%. I'll show you one of those in, in just a second. And there's also an individual assignment at the end of the module that contributes 70%. So I can look at the dates and plan my workload over the next six weeks um, for this particular module. This module has um, an element of reflection. So students are asked to post um, uh, reflect through the module, and their lecturer will give them feedback every week to a, to a journal tool. Again, some modules are slightly different, but this one has a really um, high level of, of reflection and, um, and the, the channel here for you to post those reflections and then get feedback from your, your lecturer as well. This particular module is supported by a couple of core textbooks. Um, so to, to access those textbooks, again, it's just through the platform. So I'll click on my um, first book here and it'll get me into the textbook. It's worth noting that um, this textbook is on a separate platform called Vitasource. It's all single silence. It will take me straight through. You also have access to the University of Liverpool online library, where you have access to hundreds of thousands of journal articles, ebooks, um, all sorts of amazing resources. And each week, and again, I'll show you this in a second, each week will direct you to the relevant um, reading for that week. But in this ebook, I could, um, I could select the chapter that I need to read. I can um, make notes on the textbook. I can highlight, um, I could download this particular textbook if I wanted to view it offline. So there's lots of functionality around that core textbook which is really helpful as well. Uh, back into the module and finally, I'll come on to a week of study. So this is uh, week one. 
Um, each week has a particular topic, again, some introductory text, and then now we've got some um, learning activities for me to work through. So the first of which is um, a lecture cast. So I'll load the lecture cast. And the lecture cast really is our version of a, of a traditional lecture. But instead of a passive, uh, you know, hour long experience of watching someone go through some slides, what we do is we break that content up into a variety of uh, media. And it looks something like this. So we've got some learning outcomes for the lecture. And if I click start lecture cast, you see I, I start with a piece of video. So I'll play the video and I'll um, just going to mute that. I don't know if you can hear the audio, but there's a voiceover over the back of this video. There's some narration talking through the, the animation in the video. And the video will look different depending on what the topic is about. So it might be that we use some, some stock icons like this, or it might be that we use some footage or perhaps some illustration. It really depends on what the content is about for how we present it. But what you can see is we've made this video quite short. Um, to, to break up the content over a series of chunks for this particular topic. And if I just skip forward a few steps, what you can also see is we also have activities for students to complete um, within this lecture cast. So you might be given a piece of video to watch, perhaps a multiple choice question, another piece of video or an audio or an article to read. And so it's more of an engaging experience um, rather than a, a passive experience of just watching one static um, presentation. So that's a lecture cast. If we go back to the module, we can see in week one, there are actually three lecture casts to work through different topics. Um, so I won't go into each of those now, but just to give you an idea about the type of content we um, present to students. And then the second activity set here is some um, collaborative activities. So I'll show you an example of a discussion forum. Um, so I'll go into the second one here. Um, we're given a prompt. So the student is given some instruction here. Um, some direction for how to complete the activity. And then you can see at the bottom, I simply click on add a new topic. I type my subject, type the message, post that to the forum. And then over the duration, normally a week or two weeks, my fellow students will read my post, respond to my, to my post, and you will respond to your peers as well. So it really is a, a collaborative um, learning experience. It could be that these discussion forums are assessed and contribute to the, the gradebook. It could be that they form um, part of some kind of group work project. There's a wide range of assessment methods we use, but the discussion forums, you, you will use these throughout the program, really um, useful way of, of collaborating with your, um, with your peers, but also with the lecturer. So the lecturer will also contribute to these discussion forums as, as you go through. And if I go back to week one, um, the final resources this week, how we've got some, some reading resources. So um, I've got some links to some journals here. This will take me off to the Liverpool uh, Library. Um, and I've also got a reading list for the week. So if I click on the week one reading list, you can see here I've got some recommended reading. So this is really what I have to get through. Um, that's sort of the key reading for the week. But then, you know, I can dig further and the module author has identified some additional reading. It might not be that you go through each of these journal articles, but you can perhaps pick ones that are relevant to your um, the area that you're interested in. And again, these all link to the University of Liverpool Library. So I can go straight through to the library and access these resources all with the same um, set of credentials as the, as the learning platform. So we curate the reading list each week for the students to follow. And if I go into week two, you'll see it's a very similar format. So different topic, different learning outcomes for the week, a different set of, of lecture cast material. Um, this week I've got an assessed discussion forum. So this actually carries some grade for the grade book, a different reading list and, and so on. So they, you know, the weeks um, uh, roll on in a very similar format, but different activities each week to keep students engaged with the content throughout. And of course, because there are different activities, for example, the discussion forums, you're constantly getting feedback from the lecturer. So hopefully you can develop your um, knowledge and understanding throughout the module um, rather than having just one piece of assessment at the end. There's regular opportunities for you to demonstrate your learning and get feedback from the tutor, which is, which is really important. That's that's it from me. Hopefully that gives you a sense of what it's like to study um, one of our online modules. But I'll, I'll stop sharing now and uh, hand back control. Hi, everyone. Oh, sorry. Sorry, Alex. I'm sorry. So Stephen and uh, Ida for, for your presentation. And yeah, sorry. Uh, just passing on to Alex now, who's going to talk about uh, admissions and enrolling. Um, 
just a reminder as well that feel free to ask questions in the uh, Q&A section. We've had some already, but yeah, we'll get to those at the end um, and yeah, do our best to answer them. Over to you, Alex. Apologies again for that. <laughs> No, sorry, I was too keen there. So, hi everyone, thanks for, for joining. Um, so, I'm going to run through um, the, the steps in submitting an application if you're interested in any of our programmes and the kind of general admissions process. So, if I could have the next slide, please. So, if you would like to apply, then the first step would be completing our online application form, and that will ask you to provide some um, additional information, such as your, your personal details and uh, a brief oversight of your, of your background, whether you have a, an undergraduate degree, things like that. You'd also need to select the program that you wish to apply for and your preferred start date, just so that your advisor in, um, can have all of the, the relevant details. You will also need to include certain supporting documents with your application. So we will need a photographic ID um, and this needs to be in date. You should also provide an up to date CV, copies of any educational certificates that you would like to be considered. So whether it's an undergraduate degree or any professional training, um, any additional postgraduate qualifications that you have, anything that you would like to be considered, you can attach. You will also need to submit a personal statement of three to 500 words, and this should address your relevant background, your interest in the programme and how it connects to your future career plans. And for international students, we will also require evidence of English language proficiency. So this can be an academic IELTS or a suitable equivalent qualification. And it does need to be less than two years old. Um, but if you don't have any of these, then your advisor can assess perhaps another document that you do have. Or we do have an online English language test as well that you can take um, free of charge as part of the application process. Can I have the next slide, please? So then in terms of the actual admissions process, um, what either if you submit an application or if you just submit a request for, for more information on our website, you'll be assigned a personal admissions advisor um, from, your, from your first point of contact and they will help you through the whole process. Um, we can offer, your, your advisor can offer guidance on perhaps the best programme for you. Um, as Ida mentioned, our computing programs, we offer a variety of choices depending on your background. So if perhaps you're not sure or what's the best option for you, we can help you there. So um, please do feel free to, to speak to an advisor about that. Um, we are also there to ensure that the documents that you have provided are suitable and sufficient. And you will also have the opportunity to email us any additional documents that perhaps you you forgot to include or, or something like that when you um, if you've submitted an application. Um, so when when you are ready to apply, you will do so directly on our website. There is no fee. Um, it's just a, the simple form that I mentioned earlier. Your application is then initially reviewed by your advisor, who, as I mentioned, will ensure that your documents are suitable that there's enough information on your CV and that your personal statement is as strong as possible. Um, work experience is considered alongside your, your academic background. So um, things like CV writing and your personal statement is, is a really important part. And so again, your admissions advisor can certainly help you there. Once your um, application is as strong as possible and we have all of the necessary information, then the team of admissions managers and the director of studies will work together to conduct a, a final review of your application and determine eligibility. If your application is approved, then you would be issued with a formal offer letter, which confirms your place on the program and your next steps. Um, if it's, we do offer a conditional um, we do offer conditional placements as well. So if you're perhaps in your final year of your undergraduate studies and, and planning ahead, then um, we can, issue, we can um, consider conditional offers as well. Um, then the, once you've received your, your offer letter, the next st stages will be you would need to submit an acceptance form and make your initial deposit payment. The deposit payment also covers your first month of tuition, so it's not an extra cost. And once this is taken care of, then no further funds are due until after you've you've started your program. So um, 
it's not a it's not an additional cost at all and there is no interest if you chose to pay if you chose to pay monthly can i have the next slide please so then in terms of tuition fees for the postgraduate award, which is only available on a couple of our programmes, it's only available for healthcare leadership and for LLM, uh, the international business law, I believe. Um, but so the, the price for that is 2,550. For the postgrad certificate, it's 5,100. For the diploma, it would be 10,200. Um, and the, the indicative study durations are also on the screen for you there. Those are the, the minimum durations, um, but obviously study breaks can be applied. Um, that, that may not change your, your fee, but all of that sort of thing could be discussed with the student support team um, once you are enrolled or, or if you have any questions. And again, you can you can speak to um, the your admissions advisor if you have, have concerns about that ahead of time. Um, can I have the next slide, please? And then again, so for our, our Master of Science um, programmes, 30 months, 15,300, and that's the same for our MPH and the LLM. The MBA is the only master's programme that comes with a, a different price, still 30 months, um, but that one is 21,000. Um, monthly payment plans are available for all of those. All of our programs um as i mentioned there is no interest charged on those it would just be the total fee divided by the duration of the program so no hidden cost anything like that everything's included um these prices do include all of your tuition fee uh, sorry all of your tuition study materials everything like that but these costs are net of any applicable tax in your country um your country of residence that is set beyond our control and unfortunately can't be wavered. So you can speak to your admissions advisor about that at the time. Can I have the next slide, please? <coughs> Excuse me. So in terms of fees and funding, um, regional discounts are offered up to 15% um, for students living in, in some countries. These are automatically applied based on your, your country of residence and that will pull through on the application form. So there's no need for you to submit a, a separate application or request for those. If you are eligible, they will be applied. Um, and your admissions advisor can discuss these either at the time of your, your inquiry or once you've applied and um, can make you fully aware of, of the fees involved. We do also offer a 5% upfront discount if you choose to pay the full fee upfront um, and lots of program at uh, students whose programs are funded by employers they choose to take up that option so that is that's potentially um worthwhile discussing if uh, that's an option for for any of you um and we do also offer a 10 percent alumni discount for university of liverpool graduates so um that's some, certainly something to to benefit from and to consider if you have studied with the university of liverpool before um many of these discounts can be used in conjunction with each other um and so if you are eligible for a kind of, for a variety, then again, everything will be considered and added automatically. There's no need to, um, to, to do anything different. And it will all be applied by your admissions advisor who will be able to confirm your, your final fees based on your circumstances. That is everything from me. So I will hand back to Tom. Thank you, Alex. Um, yeah, so we've got time for questions now. We've had quite a few. Um, a common one that's coming up is um, regarding uh, proving English language proficiency. So some people have asked if, they, mm. if their native language is English, but they're an international student, or if they've been taught in English either at school or in university, um, do they still have to provide proof of their proficiency in the English language? Okay, so not necessarily. Um, if you if you live or, or, or are a native of a predominantly English speaking country, then you, we may not require further evidence of English language proficiency. Equally, if you have studied at degree level um, with, uh, with confirmed method of instruction as English, then you may not need to provide additional <clears throat> additional English language evidence. Um, all of this can be 
assessed by your admissions advisor once you apply because everything will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis. So when you submit an application or indeed when you submit an inquiry, if you would like to know what you need to provide ahead of time, you can discuss your individual circumstances with your with your admissions advisor and they'll be able to give you the most accurate advice. Um, but it is certainly possible to use previous learning studied in in English or um, there are there are exemptions to international students needing to provide evidence. Thank you um, hopefully that's answered everybody's questions. Uh, I'll pass over to you next Ida as we've had a couple of questions regarding the information systems management uh, course. So someone has firstly asked is it <coughs> excuse me is it a part of the uh, management school? Now, our information systems management is part of the computing provision, so it will be very computing focused. Thank you. And second, is is the information systems management uh, programme STEM designated? That's a very good question, and I don't know the answer offhand. I can find out. Um, we, we have your details in the chat. Thank you. Um, yep. Unless, Alexandra, if you know. It's not something that I know either, unfortunately. Um, okay. As I said, it, it's certainly something that we can we can find out and yeah. get back to. Yeah, back yeah. To it, it's, it's, that's a really good question. I suspect it is because it sh it should fall under the remit, um, but I wouldn't want to mislead you. So uh, we will find out and let you know. Yeah, um, yeah. As I said, we'll, we've got your contact info. <coughs> Excuse me, and yeah, we we will be in touch after the webinar to confirm. Um, Next, uh, I will come to, um, so this is just in general. Um, mm. So once someone completes the PG dip, can they do the dissertation after some time to be eligible for the MSc degree? Uh, in principle, yes. Uh, we, I haven't had any students do that yet, but, um, but we do expect, we wouldn't be surprised <laughs> if students started on a certificate, then decided to continue to the diploma and then decided to continue to the full master's. Um, the university have regulations about how well, how much time you need to be able to do that. So there's a for a master's degree, there's a maximum period of registration of six years. So you would have to do all of that within that time. But you could take a break after the diploma and then perhaps return. The only other thing I might say is that um, if you did think you wanted to do that, don't accept the diploma. Uh, because there's an administrative issue in doing that. But anyway, when you get to that point, we can have a conversation about it and you can make a decision. Thank you. Um, another one is, will there be exams or assessments to finish the modules? Um, we have some of our modules have examinations, but they're very limited. Almost all our programmes have coursework only. Um, we can, our, our admissions team and our, our module profiles will have those those elements that have examinations, but there's very few examinations and most of our programs have no examinations. It's all would be assessed coursework. Thank you. Um, next is, are there any duration limitations to finish each module? For example, week one work should be completed in one week uh, or is the whole program at our own pace? Um, no, we do have timelines. So although though the module, uh, although the programs are relatively flexible, we will have certain deadlines for submission of coursework that must be met, or there are marking ramifications to that. Um, and we would expect that if you start a, a module, that you will continue on the module in time with the module. So we would expect that week one, you would complete the materials and then move on to week two. There is slight flexibility as you would do in any educational program, but there are set deadlines for each of our assessments that must be met. Thank you. Um, next question is um, regarding both organisational and business psychology um, and also mental health psychology. Uh, do students need a background in psychology to, to be um, enrolled on those courses? No. Okay, perfect. Thank you. Um, and next, um, are we going to be assigned a learning mentor throughout the programme? Um, we haven't taken that approach at the moment. Um, you will have access to the student support team and the lecturers. So uh, we don't have a specific mentor, but there isn't a lot of level of support if you need it. So um, again, my experience with students is that sometimes that support changes throughout the programme. So, so we wouldn't want to assign an individual person because to 
different people sometimes help in different ways. Thank you. Um, next question. I'm coming to you a lot here, Ida, but there's a lot of... Uh, no, no, that's fine. Specific, um, I, I, I clearly didn't outline things well enough. <laughs> I wouldn't go that far. Um, so this question is, as, as art artificial intelligence is a research-driven domain, will the coursework be updated as the years progress or will material remain the same a few years oh. from now? We, we're always refreshing material. Uh, so and the men, if, if there's a anything small, we do it and we amend it immediately um, and we are refreshing materials. All our lectures at the, are at the cutting edge of their fields and um, a lot of our learning materials are meant to be uh, to update quickly. So um, yes, we refresh everything um, honest, or quickly. Um, we have a, a scheme where everything is looked at and refreshed, um, but then a number of the activities are also not dependent on what might have been prepared already. So discussions for forums, for example, are active and are at the cutting edge. So no, um, everything is, is kept up to date as much as possible. Thank you. And um, next question is from the same person. So they've asked, um, is there any particular minimum eligibility requirements for the AI program? Um, for example, they have bachelor's uh, in computer science and just over a year's working in an AI slash MLE engineer uh, role. That sounds to be an ideal background for that program. Perfect. Alexandra, would you agree? I would agree, yes. And I would also say that all applications are considered on a case-by-case -case basis. So we are open to any and all students from, from any background and any relevant experience or education that you have will be considered. Thank you. Um, that's a really helpful answer. Um, next one is, can you do an accelerated MBA in a shorter period or is 30 months fixed? Um, no, that's the time, Okay, I'm afraid. Thank you. Um, next question is, um, my bachelor degree is in is information management. Uh, am I still eligible to apply for the computer science uh, MSc? We would have to look at the details more closely. Okay. Um, we might be, um, given what's already been studied, we might suggest another program, for example, mm -hmm. to complement what you've done in the undergraduate degree rather than to simply augment on it. But we can discuss that through our admissions teams. Thank you. Um, I suppose this one is for you, Alex. So someone has asked, uh, could you apply for three different courses um, and then make a decision later based on which um, which course fits best with your aspirations? Um, in theory, yes, you could. Um, it, I, I would suggest it would probably be better for, for an administration point of view for, to ensure that the communication that you're getting is is clear and and relevant to each of the the programs that you're interested in it may just be better for you to um kind of have these discussions upon one application with your advisor because if you're if upon applying you you discuss with your advisor and you think that actually or oh, it doesn't sound like this program is is right for me we can change your program on our end you don't need to submit a new application and so if the decision is made that you may be better suited elsewhere, that is a really easy change for us to make. So in theory, yes, it is possible for you to apply for a couple of different programs and then make a decision. Um, but I would suggest the, the better option um, for, for you to make sure that you have the information that you need is for you to discuss it with your, discuss the different programs you're considering with your advisor and then go from there. Thank you. Um, and the next question is, um, I suppose this is quite an open one. Um, we've had it a couple of times. Is there any difference between the online and offline master's degree certificates? So I'm guessing that would be whether they study online or on campus, uh, I suppose. No. So when you're in, um, issued with your certificate, it won't mention online. You will get a transcript that simply says University of Liverpool. Perfect. Thank you. Um, so... Again, another quite open question. So someone has asked, they're in Vietnam. Uh, after finishing their studies, will they have a chance to attend the graduation ceremony or will the degree be shipped to my country? Yep. You will be invited to attend the graduation ceremony. Perfect, thank you. Okay. Um, there are some questions for the MBA course. So 
what are what are some unique points of this MBA course compared to other universities and how much peer learning do students have and how they interact other than live lectures and discussion forums? Um, I, I think the MBA program that we offer online is really, really good. Um, the first thing it's offered online. So you can continue to work as you, as you undertake the program. So it doesn't matter where you're based. Um, that the second part of that is the fact that students are based all over the globe. So I've just had a meeting with um, one of our potential external lecturers to um, because we have a number of different ways that students interact and the peer learning is really, really central to that program. So we have our, our normal taught lectures and we've already had it. Uh, Stephen's already given us an example of what that looked like on the platform. But we also have executive project weeks and those weeks are set aside for students to work with each other on projects. And I've just met with a professor in sustainability who will be leading one of the executive project weeks where uh, a topic will be uh, introduced at the beginning of the week and then students will work in groups throughout the rest of the week to uh, come up with ideas about how the, what is happening in that topic will impact their own business environments. Um, we also have a career catalyst which in which peers work together. So there's a lot of additional peer learning within the MBA. Um, but of, of course, you can still do it in your own time and um, wherever you are. So um, the wide student cohort is really, really important, I think, for that. You will learn and meet net and, and network with individuals across the globe. We have a really strong student cohort in that program. Thank you, Ida. Um, next question um, is, um, one second. Uh, so yeah, uh, one for Alex. Uh, how long does the application process take and how long after applying would someone receive an offer? Oh, excuse me. Uh, the standard time is that it can take up to 10 working days for a decision to be made on your application once we have all of your supporting documents and, and your applications ready to go. Um, but in reality, we, we aim to have a decision a lot quicker for you. Um, but so generally, I would say that the kind of turnaround time from uh, the point of application to you receiving a decision is between one and two weeks. Thank you. Um, next question. So, um, and going back to the information systems management program, uh, does this course have any optional modules that can be elected to study on campus? Um, I, no. So, if you all our programs are all online, there might be some flexibility in the modules that you can take, but those would be. But the, if you start the online program, then you would take the, take the online program. Um, but going back to that, I've seen some questions about whether you can get a student card and whether you can use the on-campus facilities, and that is possible. So uh, if you are in the Liverpool region and you take one of our online programs, you are you will get a card that will give you access to the library. You will be able to use facilities that the university has to offer as if you were on campus. Thank you, Ida. That also answers another question that we've had a few times regarding using the campus facilities. If, yeah. If um, the other on. thing we can offer is that um, your, I, I don't know, if for UK students, you might be aware that you can use other libraries under university libraries through the um, SCOT, um, SCONA scheme. And, and our students, our online students have access to that as well. So you would get a Liverpool card that would allow you to access physical libraries at other universities as well. Thank you. That's uh, that's really good to know. Um, another question is: Would I need a background in sports to enrol in the sports management program? Um, that's quite an interesting one, and I would encourage you to contact our admissions team about that. Some of um, once you start the program, some of the um, some of the elements are very sports related. So. Um, it depends on what you want to do. If you're not already, if you're working in the field, then obviously it's it's ideal for you. But um, we would have to look carefully at your background to make sure that you were suitably supported throughout the program. Um, and all having said that, it is designed for students who want to get into the field as well. So um, that we would have a discussion about that through our admissions team. Thank you. Um... Another question is, does the MBA satisfy the requirements for one to attain level seven status with the Chartered Management Institute? 
I will have to look into that. I know okay. we have been having discussions about that, um, but I'm not sure that we've gone any further with that at the moment. Okay, thank you. Yeah, um, again, we'll be able to get in touch following the webinar once we, we're able to confirm this. Um, Um, yes, uh, next question is, are your project management courses accredited? Not at the moment that I'm aware of, but again, I will double check and get back to you. Okay, thank you. Um, someone has asked, they are considering uh, the organisational and business psychology programme and they are asking, how would the psychology department at the University of Liverpool compare to others to compare to others in the UK? Uh, that's a really good question. Um, the way that that program works is the first four modules on the pro on all our psychology programs are the same. So if you start on the psychology conversion or the mental health or the organisational psychology, you'll be taking the first four modules as if you were all on the same program. The final four modules, the final four taught modules and the project will be specific to that uh, area. So um, so a lot of it will be very psychology based. You'll be taking modules with the same with psychology students. Um, it's when we when you go further through the course that it becomes more focused in terms of the ability to change the, your program, your pathway, as it were, during that time. Um, I don't have an answer to that yet. It probably will depend a lot on your entry requirements um, as well as your academic achievement. So, but, um, but I hope that goes to some way to explaining how that compares to other UK provision. Thank you. Um, another accreditation question is, is the Information Systems Management MSc accredited? Um, we're working for BCS accreditation at the moment. Yes. Perfect. Thank you. Um, a question for Alex is, may I reapply for a different course? Should I be unsuccessful with my first option? Yes, certainly. So if you, if you do apply and you unfortunately aren't eligible for your programme of choice, then if there are other options that we feel you you would be better suited to then we will certainly let you know and recommend those and you are welcome to submit um later applications if you would like to be reconsidered for for any of our other programs at any stage thank you um and and sorry just one second um so yes someone has asked um for the computing um the computer science uh, program. Can we switch the, the program after a few modules if we find another more suitable um, program, for example, from computer science to data science? It will depend on the circumstances. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, and we'll just have one last um, question. So someone has asked, um, once I finish the psychology program, may I apply for the, doc the doctoral, I think is how you pronounce it, psychology program on campus? Um, I, there would be nothing to prevent you from applying, um, but I really don't have enough experience in that area at the moment to know what the chances would be. As you know, a doctoral psychology program is very, very competitive. Um, so there will be a number of factors involved, but um, I can get back to you, Karen, ab about that, if you like, um, to, to offer more specific advice about that. It probably also depends on your background before you take the conversion program. So there'll be a number of factors uh, in, in terms of your application and your potential success on a doctoral psychology program. Thank you. And I know it's the last question, but just one last question. Um, mm -hmm. We kind of, I think we kind of covered it. Um, earlier, but for conversion masters, do the degree titles include conversion or is it just the name of the course itself and no conversion? I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to look into that one too. Okay. Thank I wouldn't you. want to mislead anybody, so it's better to check. Yeah. So. No worries. Thank you. Um, yeah, I think that's all we've got time for today. Um, if we have missed any of your questions, 
we'll do our best to get in touch with you following this. Um, we've also recorded the webinar, so that will be sent around um, at a later date. Um, if you should re uh, what, wish to rewatch it, should I say? Um, and yeah, um, if you do want to find out more about progr our programs, then uh, you can visit our website, which is online.liverpool.ac.uk. And there's plenty of information there about the courses, about studying with us, um, anything you might want to know. Um, and if you need to get in touch with um, say with our team with any questions, then um, we do have a contact page on there as well. Um, thank you for all your time. Uh, thank you as well to Ida, Stephen and Alex for presenting and for your answers to all these questions. Um, we hope you found it useful and, um, yeah, hopefully see you studying with the university soon. Um, thanks again and, yeah, um, goodbye everyone.